Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn on Apple Intelligence for your Mac. And I'll show you some of the Apple Intelligence features that are included with Sequoia 15.1. So let's get right into it. So let's start by going over the requirements needed to run Apple Intelligence on your device. So you're gonna need a Mac with an M1 chip and later, and you need to be updated to Mac OS Sequoia 15.1. And if you're not sure what Mac you have, there's a simple way to go and check. So we're going to head over to the Apple in the top left, then click about this Mac, and then your Mac model chip and version number will be displayed in this menu. And let's say you are not up to date. So we can show you how to quickly update real quick. So we're going to have it over to system settings. Then we're going to click general, then software update. And then your Mac will check for updates. If there's any available updates, they will appear here. And as we can see, I'm already up to date on Mac OS Sequoia 15.1, so we can just continue on to the next thing. Okay, so to turn on Apple Intelligence, you're going to have to first join a waitlist. This waitlist is fairly short, takes around an hour in my experience, and I've turned this on for a couple of devices already, and it should be like around an hour then. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to head over to System Settings, then we're going to go under Apple Intelligence and Siri, and then you will see a button that says join Apple Intelligence waitlist. In this case, you don't see it on my screen as I've already joined, but you'll see that button. Once you click it, it will explain to you what is involved and like what are the features you'll be getting. Um, do keep in mind that Apple Intelligence is considered a beta feature, so don't be surprised if you do see some issues here and there. In my experience, it's been fairly stable and I haven't really had any major issues. Um, so it should be all good for you. Um, your Mac will notify you once you're ready and your Mac is joined in and you can start using Apple Intelligence. So you'll receive the notification and you'll have to go back into system settings and then click turn on Apple Intelligence. And once you do that, all the models will be ready for you to use and you can start diving into some of the new features, which we'll get into next. Let's kick things off by starting with the new Siri. So do keep in mind, this is not the new full-blown Siri with personal contacts and on-screen awareness. Rather, this is just the improved language understanding and the updated UI. So with the new updated Siri, we get a couple new things here. So beside the improved um, voice to speech and everything, it understands your requests even when you stumble upon your words, but we can also now type to Siri. And on the Mac, I find this a really big thing. I think it's very convenient to just type and it kind of keeps your flow going, especially if you're already typing on the keyboard. So we can now invoke Siri via any of the command keys on our keyboard. So you can double press any of them. So let me give you a quick example here. I'm going to double click the command key and now this new Siri window pops up. We can see that now Siri has this new glowing box animation that's rounded off. And if you do prefer to dictate to Siri, there is a little microphone button here that you can press. But let's say I want to know, um, how does a CPU work? And now when Siri gives a response, it kind of morphs out of this bubble here and into this separate little bubble down below. And that little answer will have a translucent kind of look and glow. It's overall a nice UI and it works fairly quick. And something new is that now Siri has product knowledge, which means it knows how to do things on your computer. So let's say I want to know, how can I send a message on my Mac? I don't know, let's see. And look, it gives me step-by-step -step instructions on how I can send a message on my computer straight from the Mac user guide. And this works with a variety of features. iOS 18.1 also gets this, but I'll leave that for another video. In addition, I also forgot to mention that you can move the Siri response bubble around the screen. So let's say I asked, uh, what is 200 plus 600, whatever. Um, I want to move this response around. I can just move it around anywhere on the screen. You want it to be up here. I can do it. It could be in the middle, in the corner, anywhere you want. You can basically move the little window. And I think this is going to be very useful, especially if you're trying to reference some information that Siri has provided you. And then you can just copy that down into another application. So I think that's a very nice change that they added there too. So another new thing with Apple Intelligence is notification summaries. So if you ever received like an influx of notifications and you just cannot seem to catch up with all of them, um, with Apple Intelligence, it'll just summarize all those notifications. And in my experience, it does a fairly good job at doing that. So if we want to refine like some of the apps that it chooses to summarize, we can actually change that in the system settings. So if we head over to system settings and we head over to notifications, 
and we go under summarize previews, you can choose which apps Apple Intelligence will summarize from and you can enable or disable them at any point in time. So that is all new here. And if you just straight up don't like the summarize previews, you can just disable it right here. I don't have an example of how this looks on Mac OS, but I do have a screenshot from my iPhone, which I will put on the screen so you can get you kind of get an idea of what a summarized notification would look like. And something to keep in mind is there's this little icon that will indicate when a notification is being summarized by Apple Intelligence. So keep that in mind when looking through them so you know what is summarized and what is not. So another feature that's included with Apple Intelligence in this update is writing tools. So what's nice about writing tools is that they work across the whole system and they work across third-party apps and websites. Unfortunately, Google Docs is not included in that list, but maybe eventually they will be. But um, let's take a look here with this note, with all these notes I have for this particular video. And we have this new button here. And if we click this, it'll give us this little menu that gives us different options to make either our um, writing more friendly, professional, concise, you can get summary, key points, list, table. You can have it rewrite all this or you can have it just straight up do a proofread. So let's say I just want a summary of all this that I wrote or actually no, I want the key points. So it's gonna um, analyze what I wrote and it's gonna give me the key points of the stuff I talked about. And this is fairly accurate. This is pretty much what I talked about in these notes. And it works fairly well. And if something isn't right, you can report it here with the report concern button. And this even works in mail. So I, I see a lot of people using this more in mail actually, but if we click um, right here on this new Apple Intelligence button, and let's say I wanna make this a little more friendly. So I can have Apple Intelligence analyze what I wrote here and it'll rewrite it in a way that is more friendly. You could have it rewrite it again to get something different. You can have um, go back to what you previously wrote or you can just report a concern. But if you're happy with what it did, you can click done and send this email off on its way. Let's talk about cleanup. I bet you probably have had a time where you have this one photo bomber in a photo that you just want to remove. Or there's just an object in a photo that just ruins the mood. Well, with cleanup, you can get that removed. So let's double tap on this image I have here as an example. I'm going to remove the helicopter in this photo. So cleanup isn't perfect for everything. Some things work better than others, but when it does work, it does a usually pretty good job. So we're gonna click edit here in the top right, and then we're gonna click cleanup. So when you first go to use this, you will need to um, download the models first, which it will automatically start doing. And then once it's done, you won't have to ever do that again. Um, some things to keep notice, note of is on the right hand side, we have the size things. So similar to Photoshop, you can adjust the brush size that you have. And you can just either click, circle, or brush over what you want to remove. So in this case, I want to remove this helicopter. So I'm just going to run over the helicopter here, just brush over it, and the system will automatically identify it and remove it. Now it's gone. Looks like it was never there to begin with. And it will also add in the metadata that this photo was edited with cleanup so that people are aware. And let's say you're not happy with the results of cleanup, you can report a concern as well in the bottom right hand corner. And if you just want to reset what cleanup did, just click reset cleanup and boom, the helicopter is back. Some other additional features that are also included in this update are a new focus mode called reduce interruptions, which um, basically analyzes what notifications it may deem as important and will surface them up to you whenever it needs to. But um, it's kind of like do not disturb in a way where basically nothing comes through unless it feels that this could be an important notification that you should know about. And just like other focus modes, you can have allowed people and allowed apps that you can set manually as well. And overall though, it works fairly well though. I've, I've used it for like around two weeks just to give it a test and it, it works pretty well. And it's worth giving it a shot if you want something that um, keeps you focused while still letting you hear the things you need to hear about. And um, memory movies are another feature that are supposed to be in here, but it doesn't appear to be in 15.1, could be saved for a future update. In, but um, on the iPhone, that feature does currently work. It basically allows you to um, describe a memory and Apple Intelligence will take photos from your um, library and combine them based off which you asked for. And then priority emails will also show in the top of the mail app as top priority. So that is also another thing that is different. Although this may seem that there's only a few features, we still got more to come. 
Apple is currently testing 18.2 and Mac OS 15.2, and that version includes Image Playgrounds, Genmoji, Image Wand, and ChatGPT integration using um, OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0 model. So that's going to enable a lot of new stuff, and that's just some of the things that Apple has talked about. We're still going to see more stuff come out over the next couple of updates, but for now, enjoy messing with Apple intelligence and keep on the lookout for new stuff. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.